So welcome back, dear uh, students. So half of the program is over, CP Gate MCOM entrance program. And uh, I am very proud to say that today we have a great resource person. And just now I spoke with uh, your student, Satish sir. And she, she is studying in SRR college only. She also joined now. Okay. And uh, so he, um, our today's resource person, is a very good expert in, a, in the subject. And he is a PhD in Commerce and Business Management, which was obtained from Kakatiya University in the year 2009. And he was graduated from NSE India with NSE India Certified Market Professional Program. And uh, he has Ramesh, sir, if I am not interrupting, uh, sir? I, I, I request you to you know introduce as a faculty of SRR because this much all you A, B, C, D uh, for students, I don't think it is not required. Uh, I, please don't uh, misunderstand. I request oh. you to introduce me as SRR College faculty. That's enough. Okay, sir. Okay. So today, our resource person, Dr. A. Satish Kumar, sir, he is associate professor working presently in SRR, the famous SRR government college, Karim Nagar. And he has published numerous articles in various journals various reputed journals, national and international. And he has a rich experience of 27 years of teaching experience for undergraduate students, 17 years, and for postgraduate students, 22 years. And you can see this is his brief, what you call a brief profile. As Sar mentioned, as Sar requested, I will not go deep into this profile. And I will directly hand over the proceedings to him. So you are welcome, sir. You are most welcome. And we are privileged to have you today. Thank, thank you, you, sir. Thank you. Thank you for accepting my uh, proposal. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, sir. Uh, I am giving uh, you co-host. Uh, th thank you, sir. Uh, students and uh, convener of uh, this PG entrance coaching, PG MCOM entrance coaching, Dr. Naresh and uh, Dr. Ramesh, and other faculty members and principals, and especially the participant students. Good evening to all of you. Uh, today, my topic is uh, uh, current affairs related to commerce and business management. Uh, actually, this is, uh, uh, I am going two forms. One is the PPTs. Uh, these PPTs are not uh, prepared in the interest of uh, general business management, but based on the last three years, uh, MCOM entrance, Questions. I had gone through thoroughly all the three years papers, uh, which were provided by Dr. Naresh. Um, based on the uh, three years questions related to commerce and business management current affairs, uh, the presentation is prepared. And for uh, all the topics that I am going to cover, I have also prepared the objective type questions, that is multiple choice questions. About 100 questions are prepared. And I am sure if you go through this presentation, at the same time, the PDF which I am going to share with you regarding the 100 questions, you will get a minimum of 6 to 9 questions uh, out of 10 uh, for current affairs. Okay. So let me start with uh, uh, the first presentation. Uh, I am sharing the screen. Sir, it is stopped here. How to share the PPT? Naresh, sir, are you available? Uh, or, uh, uh, sir, uh, sir, uh, share our screen, sir. Screen, share, share screen option is there, no? Yeah, I knew share. I'll just share. You check it, sir. Share screen, error. Uh, sir, uh, reactions, pakakuni, sir. Reactions, pakana. Share and yes, sir. Share. Need to raise the capital. Companies which are in which are looking for capital, they want to raise capital 
come by coming to this market called primary market so for companies the prospective investors are the target and for the prospective investors they look for the various companies equities debentures bonds etc whatever they sell and based on the their choice they buy so where the primary market plays very very mm. important oh. then uh, the second part of the capital market is secondary market once the transactions once the transactions of the primary markets are completed then the secondary market coming comes into picture and one more important thing is for primary market there is no common or where there is no physical place or common place where you can see the participants like companies and the uh, prospective investors but in the case of secondary market you can see physical existence okay where the participants can come and or you can see physical infrastructure also like stock exchange simply in simple terms secondary market itself is stock exchange or stock market okay what happens in secondary market role of company is zero or uh, almost all nominal in case in the case of secondary market so who will take part in the secondary market shareholders already who purchased shares in the primary market will come to the secondary market to sell and buy their shares example i have purchased 1000 shares in the primary market okay if i am interested to sell the same shares okay i have to come to secondary market that is stock exchange so i am coming to secondary market that is stock exchange to sell my shares similarly if someone is interested to buy this kind of shares those people also will will part will be participating in the secondary market means in the secondary market the role of company which already sold the shares in the primary market is very minimal only the shareholders existing shareholders and prospective shareholders will come to the market with an intention to sell and buy the shares which they hold or which they want to buy so this is called secondary market and we call it as stock market or stock exchange yeah again further to discuss further primary market uh, you will find couple of terms uh, in the examination you can expect couple of terms like ipo is one second one is fpo uh, you may get a question like expand the term ipo expand the term fpo so what is ipo initial public offering initial public offering means company very first time offering its capital to the public to invest it is inviting the applications from the public to invest so that kind of offering is called as initial public offering then what is fpo fpo i have not shown on the screen but you can expect a question like fpo also fpo is in fpo also company coming forward to market and asking the prospective investors to invest by buying the shares but not first time but maybe after that maybe second time third time etc means whenever company offering the shares first time it is called initial public offering whenever the company offering the same shares in the market second time and afterwards it is called further public offering fpo okay except the difference like this and remaining process is same in first case and second case company always issues a prospectus by going through the prospectus only the investors will come forward and they will take a decision whether to invest or not or to buy or not the shares issued by the company okay and in secondary market the very very important role played by one participant is called that is intermediary called stock exchange okay so in in india you have uh, two types of stock exchanges one is national level stock exchange which offer services across the country right from the beginning kashmir to kanyakumari assam to rajasthan and all second category of uh, stock exchanges are called regional stock exchanges which offers their services only to that particular region uh, to give to get more clarity i will give the example uh if you take the uh, west bengal to serve the 
uh, investors and companies located in that particular state, you have a regional stock exchange called Calcutta Stock Exchange. Calcutta Stock Exchange. And another example, like to serve the both shareholders and the companies located in the Tamil Nadu, you have uh, Madras Stock Exchange. Okay. Similar to this regional stock exchange like Calcutta Stock Exchange and Madras Stock Exchange, we have about 17 more. That means altogether 17 regional stock exchanges are there. But the role of regional stock exchange is also very minimal because technology enabled services are offered by the national level stock exchanges and the services offered by national level stock exchanges are available nook and corner means all parts of India. So though we have n number of regional stock exchanges, the role of national stock exchange is very, very important as, and their services are available across the, you know, all corners of India across the uh, country. Now, how many, uh, you know, national level stock exchanges are there? There are only two national stock exchanges. One is Bombay Stock Exchange. Other one is National Stock Exchange. Bombay Stock Exchange, popularly known as BSE. National Stock Exchange, popularly known as NSE. So, Bombay Stock Exchange and National Stock Exchange having a lot of Indian capital market. Okay. Both are located in Mumbai, which is, a, which is also called as an economic capital of India. Only we have two national stock exchanges. Both are offering services across the country and both are located in Mumbai. And very, very important point is oldest stock exchange in India means first established stock exchange. Oldest stock exchange in India is Bombay Stock Exchange, which was established in 1875, 1875. And youngest stock exchange in India is National Stock Exchange. Oldest and youngest. Both are national level stock exchanges and both are established or offering services from Mumbai. These points you have to you know uh, note down and uh, practice the objective questions that I am going to provide you after completion of this session. And uh, what, what happens in stock exchange? Investors can buy and sell their shares through online mode, okay, where sometimes they will get loss, sometimes they will get profits. What are the functions of financial markets? Uh, two important functions you can uh, note down. One is mobilizing the savings, savings from the individuals to the uh, you know, to the persons who need the finance. Okay, means example, I have some surplus in my salary. What I will do? I will try to save that surplus yeah. amount in bank and other. Uh, uh, other options that I have and uh, amount collected by the you know the intermediary like bank what they will do they supply it to the people who are in need of capital maybe a factory located in Karim Nagar a factory located in Hyderabad etc okay so one is mobilizing of savings and the other one is allocation of capital especially all these things will happen through very important uh, institution called banking or financial institution. Okay. Then who regulates? Who regulates financial markets? Financial markets are regulated by two important institutions. There are many institutions, but these two are very, very important institutions which regulate the financial markets. One is Reserve Bank of India. But Reserve Bank of India is not going to regulate Two, two important parts of uh, financial institutions. First important part is called money market. The second one is called capital market. Money market transactions are regulated by Reserve Bank of India. Means short term related, liquidity related issues are under the control of Reserve Bank of India. I am repeating again, Reserve Bank of India not going to regulate entire financial market. Reserve Bank of India regulates one segment or one part of the financial market called money market related transactions. And the other side you have capital market 
which is regulated by the SEBI. SEBI, to get uh, you confused, uh, they will ask you expand the term SEBI, S -E -B -A, SEBI. So, where, where they will give you different options. You note down very clearly. Uh, if you have the habit of uh, writing down, please note down this. SEBI means securities and. And word is also there. Because in most of the competitive examination, uh, they will uh, they will give you Securities Exchange Board of India, Securities and Exchange Board of India. Okay. So, and is there in between Securities and uh, Exchange. Securities and Exchange Board of India regulates or monitors the capital market. Reserve Bank of India monitors or regulates monetary, oh, sorry, money market. So, these are the two important regulatory bodies that you have as far as the financial markets concerned. Now, regarding financial instruments, just I will read out because most of them, all the things that I am showing on the mentioning uh, in the PPT are known to you. Uh, popular financial instruments are sh equity shares, uh, debt instruments like debentures and bonds, derivatives. Derivatives are, uh, you know, um, they, uh, they are not primary, you know, financial instrument. You can say they are secondary, second category of financial instruments because derivatives themselves are developed on, on the basis of one of the underlying assets, like again, stocks and bonds. Okay. So when you have equity share, when you have bond, when you have uh, debenture, when you have some commodity, when you have some currency, all these are primary instruments, primary financial instruments. On this, again, one more product is developed. That product is called derivative. And derivative is also a financial instrument which can be traded in the stock exchange. Okay. Uh, the main purpose of uh, der derivative uh, availability in the financial uh, instruments and financial market is to cover or to you know, manage the risk associated with the underlying assets. Uh, it is a difficult to the students to say that they have to say derivatives. The derivatives are the same as the underlying asset. Ante equity, equity share, debenture, bond, commodity, currency. These are the primary financial instruments. These instruments are the same as the trade. The risk is the same as the risk. The risk is the same as the instrument is available. The instrument is the derivative. Okay. So, when you have risk associated with the underlying asset, you are trading another financial instrument called derivative. Okay. Then you have another uh, uh, financial instrument called mutual funds. I don't think uh, much explanation is required for mutual funds. These are the popular financial instruments on which you can expect our, uh, a question. Just now I was mentioning um, stock exchange is one of the, uh, you know, regulatory body in the financial markets uh, which will, which is into you know most of the times they are into uh, primary sorry secondary market transactions uh, and uh, they facilitate the trading of equity bonds and derivatives and before i close the financial markets topic let me uh, highlight a uh, uh, dematerialization process and uh, organizations involved in the dematerialization process because in uh, I think last year or last but one year, we have two questions on dematerialization. Dematerialization, dematerialization process is converting the physical shares into electronic form, simple. Material, dematerial means earlier shares and stocks were available in physical form, like your SSC memo, intermediate memo, physical form certificate. Now, all the physical form certificates of shares are converted into dematerialization means into electronic form means dematerialized everything is now available in electronic form this is called dematerialization process okay why this is happening for efficient transaction of tradings trading between the shareholders and between the expected uh, prospective shareholders and uh, uh, current shareholders and what type of trading system uh, trading system is going on in the stock market means there is no physical or there is no outcry system today. Today in the both regional stock exchanges and national stock exchanges, 
both BSC and NSC, offering only electronic trading platforms. That is the reason just by uh, holding phone in your hand, sitting in your own remote village, either you stay in Mumbai, Delhi, Madras, or Calcutta, or Hyderabad, or you are staying in a small village where even you know bus facilities are also not available. If uh, telecommunication facility is available, internet is available, simply you can trade because today trading is electronic form trading, okay, uh, which improves trading facility and transparency also increases and it uh, it reaches almost all every citizen of this nation because of the electronic trading system. And what is the risk involved in the financial market? Okay, there are different types of risk involved, but uh, let me uh, cover two types of risk involved when you come to the financial markets. One is the volatility. Volatility means uh, you know, uh, up and down of the prices and the volume of the shares traded in the market. Uh, the price is not stable for even for seconds and the volume of trading is also not stable uh, even for seconds. Every two to three seconds you will find that you, uh, you can observe the change in the price in the stock market. As it is more volatile, as it is not stable, that is a riskier, riskier aspect to come and uh, you know trade in the stock market. And other one is loss of capital. There is every chance of losing your primary amount invested by you. Okay, these are the two important risks involved in the uh, financial markets. And finally, one word I will take uh, here, take up here called fintech companies. Fintech companies are the emerging in across the globe. Uh, and in India also, we have uh, much you know, emergence of fintech companies. What they do? They facilitate all the financial market transactions in a speedy, smoother, and more uh, efficient way by leveraging the technology. Okay. Uh, across the globe, this revolution is happening. Uh, students interested uh, not only for MCOM entrance examination. Uh, uh, let me give you one suggestion. If anybody interested in uh, a good career for your next 30, 40, 50 years, if you find, uh, you know, uh, if you come across any course related to FinTech in PG, either MCOM or MBA, you choose this course, uh, you can't imagine where you will be after 10 years, 20 years or 30 years. Okay. Uh, this is the end of, uh, you know, first presentation. Uh, let me go through second presentation. Uh, Second presentation is all about regulatory bodies of the Indian financial market. Okay, Reserve Bank is one which I was uh, mentioning in, in my first presentation. Okay, what is the role of Reserve Bank uh, in, uh, you know, regulating the financial markets? Uh, very first and foremost important point is formulating the monetary policy. The main purpose of the monetary policy is to control the inflation with the tool called interest rates. Students note down these points, very, very important. Monetary policy purpose is to control the inflation. And uh, to control the inflation, they use the tool called interest rates. And second function of the Reserve Bank of India is to regulate the commercial banks and ensure financial stability. Because all the financial market transactions are through banks only. It, uh, it uh, highly regulates or it, you know, takes very much uh, keen interest in regulating the banks and stabilizing the financial markets and managing foreign exchange uh, reserves and promote a stable exchange rate. Uh, you know very well uh, to all the international transactions, whenever you go for import and export and even trade the uh, foreign currencies through stock exchanges, uh, you know, you need a lot of uh, management in the foreign exchange reserves. At the same time, foreign exchange rate also. And finally, one more important is issuing the currency notes. These are the key functions of Reserve Bank of India, which plays very, very important role in monitoring and regulating the financial markets. And the second one is SEBI. Very, very interesting uh, institution, Securities and Exchange Board of India, which functions uh, on three lines. 
very first one is protecting the interest of investor generally em anukuntarante sebi anagane regulating the stock exchange anukuntaru but primary or first function of sebi is protecting the interest of investor people uh, that is investors coming to the stock market or the capital market not known to each other example you are staying in your own place and somebody who is interested to buy sell their shares sitting in say jammu kashmir both of you are not known to each other but both of you are coming to a common point called stock exchange okay which is regulated by sebi so sebi gives you assurance your your interest is protected means your stock is transferred and in turn you will get the money similarly your money is transferred in turn you will get the stock whenever you are buying and selling the shares means the sebi plays very very important role giving assurance 100% assurance to investors your interest is protected okay your money is protected your shares are protected similarly second one is uh, regulating the exchanges brokers and other market intermediaries whoever is the offering services to you as a trader as a investor so those intermediaries are also regulated by the sebi and uh, the third one is uh, developing the market by raising much capital and efficiency in the raising of the capital these are the three important functions of sebi and uh, in between uh, not only sebi and rbi there are several bodies which involved like stock exchange so bse and stock, uh, nse also involved in the regulating the financial market uh, by using the technologies and by uh, updating the data on real time basis to the investors uh, so stock exchange is also playing very very important role in regulating the intermediaries then uh, one important aspect uh, i would like to cover in the regulatory is uh, cdsl and nsdl cdsl is central depository services limited nsdl is national security depository service depository limited what they do they enable the investors to open a online depository account like you are opening a bank account a saving account where you where, where do you will go you are approaching a banker to open a saving account similarly when you want to trade when you want to keep your all the buyings electronic buying of shares and bonds in account you need one account called dmat account account name is dmat means dematerialized account electronic form of account this account is given by an agency called dp depository participant dp depository participant and these depository participants will get the license from either cdsl or nsd cdsl kaani nsdl kaani depository participants ki per- license is to okay a license holders called as dps depository participants will give you accounts em account istaru dmat account istaru so questions repeat chestunna chudandi who will give you dmat account dps will give you depository participant so dps will register where either they register with cdsl or nsdl okay so cdsl nsdl em antaru depositories antaru villa daga registration change kunna valane depository participant antaru డిపాజిటి పార్టిసిపెంట్స్ ఏం చేస్తారు టీమ్యాట్ అకౌంట్ ఇస్తారు షేర్ హోల్డర్స్ కి లైక్ యూ లైక్ పీపుల్ లైక్ యూ అండ్ మీ సో కాబట్టి మీరు షేర్ మార్కెట్ లో ట్రేడ్ చేయాలంటే డిమాట్ అకౌంట్ కావాలి 